murmured, complained. I have. Some of you are honest enough to admit it. Feeling bad about myself or feeling angry or bitter about the people around me, then instead of expediting, I'm limiting the healing ministry that I might be needing from God. As we look in our second session to the life of Jesus, there's one crystal clear message that comes as you read his life. It is impossible to relate to the Jesus of the Gospels without relating to Jesus as healer. Impossible. There's not one episode of his life that does not convey some miracle ministry of health. As you read, especially the Gospel of Mark, every time Jesus turned around, he was healing somebody. You say, well, Roy, that's just uh, a commentary on the uh, culture of the day. The, the reason why he did so much healing was because that was the main need of the day. Now, today, for example, we don't have that kind of need. We have other needs. Uh, we are technologically advanced, and the medicine has cured many of the diseases that people were experiencing then. And uh, we just simply, if Jesus came back today, he wouldn't be doing that. Well, let me say to that, uh, response of love, bunk. I don't believe that. If Jesus came today, he would touch people's lives so, and at the soul level in the same way that he did then, and he would touch people's lives at a physical level in the same way that he did then. There's no question in my mind that if Jesus visited where we live, Eugene, Springfield, Oregon, that again, every time he turned around, you'd see him healing somebody. Why? Well, because you and I, uh, a being, a complete person, are made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And if you will see, the mission of Jesus was to bring the wholeness of God wholly to man. He came and through the cross provided life for us at a spiritual level where before death reigned. He came in through his teaching as truth, speaking truth, provided an accurate glimpse of a lifestyle that would produce health on the inside and health on the inside that would produce an accurate lifestyle. You cannot read the teachings of Jesus or begin to implement them through the power of the Holy Spirit, but that your inner man is touched dramatically. And third, obviously, the Lord in his earthly ministry brought not only abundant life to the spirit of man through the cross, abundant life to the soul of man through his teaching, but abundant life to the physical well-being of men through his healing ministry. If we don't relate to the Jesus of the Bible, at some point, what you're going to concoct is a God in the form of Jesus who's interested only in your soul. And I fear that that's what a lot of Christians have depicted in their Jesus. A Savior who sees not you involved in your home and your marriage, dealing with your kids and the physical pressures of life, but he sees only your attitude. He sees only your soul. He sees only the inside. He does not see, nor is he concerned with your outside. You could be going through hell on the outside, but he's concerned about getting heaven on the inside. For a lot of people, that's how they view the Savior. He's oblivious to what I'm going through. All he sees is my attitude. He's oblivious to my pain. All he sees is what I'm feeling on the inside. He cares a great deal whether I'm bitter or angry or happy or joyful, but he doesn't give a rip if I've been vomiting or if I'm experiencing excruciating pain by reason of arthritis or been doing battle with a dread disease. He doesn't care about that. He cares about my attitude, but he doesn't care about my physical well-being. You see, you'll have to come up with that kind of picture if you don't permit the Jesus of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, to be exactly what Hebrews 13, 8 says he is. 
Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the reasons why we know Jesus is, even today, very much concerned with our physical well-being is, well, ba basically two scriptures. One, he calls your body the temple of the Holy Spirit and instructs you to keep it morally pure. He regards this five foot six and a half point ninety nine inches frame of mine as a temple of the Holy Ghost. And when I understand that in the tabernacle and the temple of the Old Testament, God went to great care to make it lovely, to make it beautiful, to make it be something suggestive of His life, then I begin to see how much He wants me in my own physical temple to conduct myself in such a way in my behavior and to be in such a way in my health a communicator of His divine life. They say, gee, boy, that really condemns me. Are you telling me that every time I'm sick that I'm communicating something less than God's full presence? Probably. And I don't think that that's something that we're to be condemned about, but I think it's something that expresses an invitation. For when I'm experiencing health, or when I'm doing battle with some sickness and experience victory in it, then I am helping people to see that there's a God who's concerned not only about my spirit, not only about my soul, but my body as well. Another scripture that lets me know that God is vitally concerned with my body is the scripture that teaches that someday he's going to give us new ones. Now, if all God sees is your soul, if all God sees is your inner person, then in the new order of things, when we all finally do get to heaven, why would he ever give you a new one? I mean, if God doesn't give a rip about your body, then why would he ever plan on giving you a new one? Uh-uh. Somehow, mysteriously so for many, in the mind of God, our body is very much tied to who we are and our identity as a being. I know there are a lot of people that wish they could get rid of their body, but I'm telling you, even though you're going to get a new one, it's still going to look an awful lot like you. Now, it will be free from the conflict that we go through now and living in a cursed world, but that bod you've got, brother, sister, is the one you're going to have. It'll be glorified, but you are still going to be you. Now, I know you like to see yourself as nine foot tall or a little thinner or a little stronger or I'd like to be, you know, missing that and not having that anymore, but I'm telling you that the new body you get is going to be glorified, but it's still going to look like you. Jesus cares a great deal, not only about your spirit, but he also cares a great deal about your soul, and he cares a great deal about your body. If we're going to relate to the Jesus of the Scriptures, then I have to call him Savior, Lord, someone who fills with the Holy Spirit, only he baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I have to call him the coming king. I also have to address him as healer. Jesus healed in two ways, sovereignly, and secondly, in response to men, women's faith. There are two aspects of the healing ministry of Jesus. He heals sovereignly and he heals in response to people's faith. If you wanted an illustration of the former, you'd look in Luke chapter 4 where after he's been booted out of Nazareth, he goes to Capernaum and there it says that they brought all their sick folk to him on one particular Sabbath and it says that Jesus healed them all. There's no record that they were standing in a posture of faith. They were just there and the Lord healed them. But then, if you wanted to study how important faith is to, to be able to receive Jesus as healer, you'd want to look at all the many other stories in the, in the New Testament. For example, Jairus, who says to the Lord, all you have to do is say in a word, I know that my daughter will be healed. Jesus marvels at his faith and sends his word, as it were, and heals them. Another illustration is the centurion who had a servant that was sick. And he said to the Lord Jesus, don't even come to my house. I'm not worthy that you should come. 
I understand authority because I tell people what to do and they go do it and I think I know who you are or I know something about the power of your life. Just say in a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says he marvels, marvels at his faith. In fact, he says, I haven't found faith like this in the children of Abraham and the people of Israel. Here's a Gentile that understands the principle of faith. So Jesus healed in two ways. One, sovereignly, demonstrating his identity, demonstrating his power demonstrating his calling, and two, he heals and responds to people's faith. I have tremendous confidence in God to sovereignly heal today in the same way that Jesus did then to demonstrate who he is and how he has power. As a believer, I don't expect God to heal sovereignly unless I'm believing. I'm not on the other side of the cross now, I'm on this side of the cross. And I know that there are times when God will still sovereignly heal, but I don't have the responsibility to assume that's going to happen. I have the responsibility to be like Jairus, to be like the centurion, and believe for healing. If you go beyond the life of Jesus and move into the book of Acts, you'll see that the church he founded, again, is tied inseparably to the healing ministry. I'm going to read to you out of... Acts chapter 3, where a great healing ministry takes place. Then I move to Acts chapter 4, where it says they prayed, Jesus, or Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal. Give signs and wonders by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And then I read in Acts chapter 5, 12, by the hands of the apostles were signs and wonders done. It goes on. It says in verse 15, people brought their sick into the streets. Verse 16, there came a multitude out of the cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and it says, and they were healed, every one. It's impossible to relate to Jesus of the Bible without relating to him as healer. It's impossible to relate to the church of the New Testament without seeing there was a tremendous ministry of healing. So I got a lot of people today saying, you know, healing isn't for today. And I'm like you. I, I've buried some people. But I cannot let experience dictate my theology. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is a healer today. And the church that Jesus is building today has a healing ministry. Worship with me and then we'll be right back. If we relate to the Jesus of the Bible, then we get to receive him as healer. He's still doing that today. And if we're relating to the church of the New Testament, then we need to expect a healing ministry to come out of the church. Let me quickly add this. Whenever you see the healing ministry of the church in the book of Acts, you almost always see it in the streets, not in the sanctuary. I think there are many of you that need to begin to accept the commission to pray with people, but though we'll continue in our church to pray for people who are sick that come to be with us, I think that the powerful healing ministry of the church is to be outside the sanctuary, not in the sanctuary. Are you sick today? Let Jesus come to you right now. The Jesus of the scriptures. A leper came and said, if you want to, I know you can heal me. And Jesus said to that leper, and to you, in whatever sick condition you might be today, I want to. Would you just open up your heart? Receive Jesus now as your healer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't let a theologian ever rob you of the sameness, the unchangingness of Jesus the healer.